Hi everyone, I really want to share my condo investing journey because I think it, by sharing the story, it's going to help a lot of people like you who are probably wondering, is condo investing right for you? Should you be buying that condo? And if that's if you're wondering about that, then this video is definitely for you because most importantly, I'm gonna cover my top five mistakes I've made investing in these condos in Ottawa. And by sharing this journey, I hope it'll help you in some way so that you can make an informed decision. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you the realities of my of condo investing based on my journey. And I'll go over a lot of the um, cons that I faced. Also share the numbers, how much I've made in my last purchase, um, actually my last sale in a condo that I bought in 2015. I'll also highlight most, of course, the top five mistakes I've made investing condos and share what you can do to help protect yourself if you're looking to invest in a condo. Hey guys, if you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to get the latest and greatest investing videos coming to you. My goal by sharing these stories, by sharing videos on real estate, on stock investing and entrepreneurship is to help more and more people reach as many people to help them live better and design their ideal life. I, before I tell you about why I decided to sell my condo, I think it'd be great for you to just get a bit of context as to why I even bought it. So this condo is in a great location in a very desirable neighborhood it's a fancy pants uh, condo it has a certain luxury lifestyle that it kind of instills when you see it it's also it's located by shops and bars and it's located in a very expensive neighborhood it's also located by um, literally transit is right behind its backyard so it's um, very close to downtown and it commands a really nice nice rent for the very small apartment it's 450 square foot apartment but it, it can command up to eighteen hundred dollars to nineteen hundred dollars right now so it's not only easy to rent but also commands a very good rental rate so you're probably thinking okay tracy so why did you decide to sell sounds like an amazing investment and that's really what i want to get down to it is sound like amazing investment it cash flow create location it attracted nice tenants. I'll tell you the underlying factors of condo investing. This is what makes condo investing more unique than other types of investments. So you face in, in, in my condo, it was uh, the condo fees. Let's start with something very simple as condo fees. When I bought the condo, I bought it pre-construction. So what that meant was that it I bought it before construction. And um, when you start out, you have to put 25% um, deposit down for it, which is okay. And at the time when I was putting a down payment, it said condo fees was projected to be $233. But then when I got the condo and a year after I got the condo, the condo fee starts drastically skyrocketing and skyrocketing up to more than 100%. So what started as $233 a month is now $460 per month for this condo fee. And in addition to that, because it was facing um, more legal issues with the zoning, with the building envelope, with the mismanage of condo fees, that it's facing a bunch of legal issues that it didn't have enough reserve fund to pay for all these other legal issues. So then if you add now special assessment fees that would you know come out of nowhere and you're like a thousand dollars here and there every couple of years. Now I don't even know how many special assessment fees I paid for this condo, but it was bothering me because simply because it was so out of control and I didn't like that. Just these are the uniqueness of condo investing because you have a condo board and then you have a developer that's building this building. You have all these tenants that are living this building. It's just, there's so much things that are out of your control. And that's the uniqueness of condo investing. Now the positives of condo investing is of course, you don't have to take care of landscaping. You don't have to worry about the roof. You don't have to worry about taking care of the amenities, but it comes with a cost and it. it's always pr priced into those condo fees. And then you just don't know the quality of the build. And I could just go on and on about that. Now, another thing about this is despite the pricing, let's not even let's now look at not look at the pricing, the condo fees and the special assessment fees. Let's park that to the side. One thing, the other thing that was bothering me was that um, I actually had a water leakage in my condo and it was uh, related to some water leaks, I think with the condo above me and it leaked into my bathroom and then it caused some, it caused water damage and it caused some molding around the shower area. And what happened was I actually, because it was in the walls where it's shared with the condo you you can't just fix that you can't just go ahead and hire contractors to fix that you actually have to involve the condo board and then you have to arrange their contractors to look at it and do an inspection and then you have to be on their timeline if you find out that it's their it's actually their fault for paying for it so then if you have a tenant who's using the only bathroom in that condo building and then you want to just say get that fixed you can't do that right away especially if it's a shared wall so what what worked out to be should have been like a week's worth of work fixing the shower and retiling took four months. So thankfully I had installed a bathtub 
along with a shower in this bathroom because most condo buildings only come with a shower and thank thankfully i had a i had a bathtub in that in that unit so the tenants could still take baths but can you imagine for four months only taking baths to clean yourself so i had the greatest tenants i reduced uh, i gave them a bit of discount on their rent it felt so bad and they're just so so appreciate they were so good but most tenants would not put up with that and i no matter what i did was um, try to get on the case with the condo board it didn't matter it's on their schedule so again those are just an, uh, just another thing that was completely out of my control and that i didn't like so maybe call me a control freak maybe i am a control freak and then the last piece is that um, when I purchased the condo, it was uh, reappraised and I already made like it went from, you know, uh, it already went up, went up like $30,000, like the year after I purchased it, which was great. But then um, because of all the condo fees rising, the special assessment fees that are coming out and then the legal battles that this condo board of uh, this condominium was facing, not in just the bills, this building, but in its two other buildings, it was actually limiting the potential of growth in this condo so even though yes it shot up 30 grand the first year of purchasing it but then it flatlined for years after and it's only recently it started to pick up and only because there's literally nothing on the market but when i i know that when i was selling the condo i knew that you know all these issues were going to come up and it's going to there if i didn't even reduce the purchase price in the negotiations it was going to come after me when the person buying it was going to check the status certificate because they're going to find out all these issues and they're going to want to drop the price again i've already faced this in my uh i sold the condo last year it was a, a different different place in downtown but it has kind of the same issues and had to do the same thing so basically it dropped the price after the after the person checked out the status certificate in this case i decided to just drop the price um, during the negotiations and then so that um, it was my bottom line and they cleaned it all out so when what does it mean in terms of how much money I made and my return on investment? So let's dive into that right now. So the purchase price that um, I bought it for was $253,000. I did sell it for $311,500. Now, after um, discounting the realtor fees, discounting the legal fees, and then also just including the little tiny bit of cash flow I made and uh, just stressing about the cash flow, I only made $900 over the past five years because mainly because the ca uh, the condo fees were like, uh, killing my cash flow. Also the special fee assessment fees are coming at me, you know, twice, uh, twice, I think, or three times over the course of five years was also killing my cash flow. Also I had to replace the washer. I had to do, you know, normal stuff like uh, painting and cleaning, get uh, cleaners in there to clean all that you know sucked up all the cash flow so only made nine hundred dollars in the past five years in cash flow so let's just say it wasn't a cash flow generator then um, because of all those costs and then even calculating just the taxes that I'm projecting to pay on it it worked out to be thirty one thousand dollars now now the kicker is that now the, you're saying okay thirty one thousand dollars that's uh in the grand scheme of things that's like a four percent a little bit over four percent year over year growth um so that's a bit higher than inflation um because i bought the price at 253 so it sounds like yeah kind of it's not bad but i think compared to all my other properties um it's definitely been my poorest performer four percent is like nothing to me for my compared to my other ottawa properties so that's why i'm kind of like it's my it's my low one of my worst performers in the Ottawa market. Now, um, the big kicker is that I had to finance this property 100%. So because in 2015, I left my engineering job, decided to pivot, take a sabbatical, redesign my life and go into full-time entrepreneurship. But then when you become self-employed, it's actually really hard to get a mortgage. Um, actually, no, no, let me, let me, no, correct that you can get a mortgage but not at the interest rates that you're probably used to because i'm used to getting like the best mortgage the best interest rates and all of a sudden i didn't qualify for that anymore i had to go for like a higher interest rate so they're called b lenders the a lenders are when you get the amazing interest rates like the from td bank world bank um scotia bank but then there's another tier of uh, mortgage lenders that are like home trusts they're uh, credit unions they they kind of up the interest rates um like equitable bank they can give you a mortgage, but again, the interest rates are higher. And I, I didn't want to get a mortgage with a higher interest rate. So I decided to self-fund it. So I decided to suck up, scrape all the equity I had, the line of credits I had available against my properties and completely pay for the property myself. So I was almost 100% leveraged on this property. The only cash and down payment I made was $5,000 for the storage locker. Now let's map it up and see what's our return our, in our investment in terms of hours. The fact that I only spent $5,000 cash, I got $31,000 in profit, so then that's like eight times. Um, also, you could look at it from how many hours I spent on this property. I only spent uh, like a day, 
a year over the past five years on this property between my husband and I because we self-managed it because it's such an easy rental. So this included, that didn't mean I only spent one day a year. I meant like in the grand scheme of an entire year is about eight hours over the grand scheme of the entire year. So for five years, that's 40 hours. So return on the hour is actually pretty good. I calculated it and it was $775 per hour compared to my other investments where I've sold it, like where I've made a couple hundred thousand dollars on, and on a property that I sold that was a triplex because that was a high maintenance property. It worked out to be $242 per hour. So I think that in terms of amount of time that this condo took and I guess the money you made, then return on your hour is actually pretty good if you looked at it from that perspective. Okay, so what was my dead simple decision to sell? Dead simple is because it sucked up a ton of equity. I think that by sharing my top five mistakes I made in this rental property, I think it hopefully it helps you make an informed decision when it comes to condo investing. So my dead simple decision to sell this condo was based on these five mistakes that I made. Number one is I completely 100% leveraged, almost not 100%, but almost uh, I didn't borrow any money from the bank to buy this property. I used the equity that was already in my portfolio to buy this property. Now you could argue, yeah, this equity is actually other people's money because, um, you know, they gave you, 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 you got a secure line of credit against these homes, which means the bank loaned you the money. So I guess, yes, I guess you could look at it from that perspective, but you know what it is? It's opportunity cost because I financed the entire property, which was a lot of money, <laughs> then I didn't have that equity to buy a different property. So I think I lost an opportunity cost. So in terms of, you know, if you had that, you were in that position, I would not recommend you finance 100% on your line of credit against that, unless you had a strategy completely paying down that line of credit because you want to say you're close to retirement. The second mistake I made was that when I um, bought this property, I didn't ask the question, could I rent it out um, in the short term? or do furnish rentals. And actually there was a rental cap on this property. I didn't realize that with Soho, with Soho condominiums, it's always a partnership with a hotel. So they were running as a hotel in the building and I couldn't compete as a hotel um, because you know obviously they charge by the by the room by the night or for um, furnished rentals so they didn't want the landlords to do the exact same model so i was only allowed to rent out the place at w at least one year leases which completely derailed my strategies for buying this condo at first i thought my strategy was to flip it and the second strategy to yes i could rent it out in the long term but say the um, rent wasn't wasn't at the right price because you know rents fluctuate i could and if i wanted to boost the cash flow then i could do furnished rentals i could do airbnb but i forgot to ask <laughs> if i could even do airbnb B&B and first rental. So you guys, if you guys are looking at condos for condo investing, please check if there is a rental cap and whether they allow Airbnb or furnish rentals. Um, now, third one is, this is really important. Newer isn't always better. Let me repeat that. Newer isn't always better. And what I mean by this is that looking at the two condos I purchased where it was pre-construction versus a condo, my very first condo purchase was my own condo and I converted into a rental. Um, when you buy something that's not completely brand new and pre-construction, you could have more intel on the quality of the building, the legal issues, because the building's already built, there's already condo board in place. But when you buy something that's completely brand new and it hasn't even been built, you are increasing your probabilities, you're increasing your risks because you don't know what the condo board's going to be like. You don't know the quality of the build. You could do all the research you could do, say checking into this developer like I did. I even worked for this developer like in my engineering days back in Vancouver. Vancouver. Anyways, again, going on tangent, I thought I knew the quality of the build, but you can't control that. That's something you don't know. So I'm just saying wise eyed open. If I were to do this over again, I would not purchase a condo before uh, just based on plans. I would uh, definitely purchase a slightly used condominium and and also with condo fees are fairly stable. I wanna see that the condo fees are not skyrocketing or at least has stabilized so that in the past few years, they haven't shot up 25% year over year. So this is what I mean, newer isn't always better. It's just because when you buy something that's a bit older, it's more predictable with the condo fees, with the, you can assess the, um, the quality of the bill, you know how the condo board is like and if they're managing the building properly. So that's what I mean. Newer isn't always better. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, but you know what? I could totally cover this by the Terry on warranty. So why would I care about buying a brand new condo and buying pre-construction? You know, it seems like the Terry on warranty could totally cover it. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's a good argument. Yeah, you totally have the Terry on warranty cover it. But see, when I had that little leakage in my condo, 
and I looked into the Tyrion, I you have it's like a huge process to get that fixed. You can't just hire like in say with my townhomes or my single detached homes, you can't just go hire a contractor and fix it and then um tell them and or it's, it's just not as easy with the Tyrion. You have there's a process behind it. You have to get the papers, you have to get their inspectors to look at it. It's like as if you're claiming insurance on it, and that's just another hassle, and they don't always cover everything. So, and then you have to involve the condo board. And all I'm getting at is there's just a huge process behind it. It's not as easy as just getting a contractor to fix the issue. It takes also a lot more time. So uh, it's on their timeline, like with my water issue, something that should have taken like a week to complete took four months. So you are at their, at their schedule. Okay, next piece is that if you're looking to invest in condos, I would recommend, especially if you're buying it pre-construction, do not buy on the bottom floors. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because I actually bought a condo at the 14th floor and I bought a condo at the fourth floor. And when I was buying, when I um, got occupancy for the 14th floor, the building was almost built. But then, and sure, yeah, you could say that the lower floors are cheaper, but you're also, it's a just kind of just, it's just harder to um, get a tenant in in the beginning. So you just have to be, I guess, conscious that if you do buy in the lower floors, you might have some more carrying costs or you have to drop the rent. For example, when I bought the condo fourth floor, I I was able to get that condo a lot earlier, but the building was in complete chaos. The um, All the amenities were not done. There was, just think of all the uh, subfloor was just laid down. Everything was like construction zone and try to get a tenant into your condominium building when the entire building is under construction. It isn't easy. I was lucky that I just reduced the rent for a little bit during the time of construction. So I was able to get a tenant, no problem, but in reality, I would prefer not to do that. I would have preferred that the condominium was built. So it's just that you have a better chance of your building being more or less built if you're on the higher floors. But of course, the downside is you're probably going to pay a bit of a premium to do that because on the higher floors, they tend to cost more. Now, the other piece is that, um, and this is the most important investing mistake I made. In Ottawa, a starter home is not a condo. Now, places in Vancouver or Toronto, maybe even Montreal, um, but for sure in Vancouver and Toronto, a starter home is a condo, which happens to be the entry home you uh, a lot of buyers want to get into. So it's easier to liquidate, has way more room for appreciation than, say, a bigger mansion. And so a starter home has the highest um probability for appreciation. I made that mistake in Ottawa. See, starter home is not a condo in Ottawa. So that's why the appreciation of a condo is so much different than say a smaller home in Ottawa, which happens to be a starter home, like a town home or a smaller three bedroom, one bathroom home has way more actually higher rates of appreciation depending on the neighborhood, of course. But to say if you're comparing oranges to oranges where you had a really nice area and the starter home was a small home versus a condo, I found that the smaller home has had a better appreciation than a condo, simply because in Ottawa, the starter home is not a condo. So when you look at investing condos, is it the starter home in that city, especially if you're a new investor and you're wanting to buy a home with the biggest appreciation potential? Now, if of course, if you're looking for huge cash flow, then it probably doesn't really matter because maybe you found a condo that is a huge cash cow and you could do Airbnb, then that's great. But I'm just saying that if you're looking for huge appreciation potential, look at it from the perspective, is it a starter home? Because starter homes are the ones that have the bigger appreciation potential and it has the more and more increases year over year and it's easiest to liquidate because there's, there's more people just wanting to it's a necessity. People need a home to live in. Anyways, I hope you found this video super helpful. If so, let me know by hitting the like button. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe to my community. It's free and hit that bell notification button so you get the latest and greatest videos coming to you. I'll see you next time.